¿Qué onda si chacho arriba las manos? Cabacho, moreno, peleta. Welcome, Bronze Nation. Today's lesson will be on the love Mexico has for the Irish by way of the St. Patrick's Battalion. Here's a brief breakdown on how the Irish defected the U.S. Army and fought for Mexico during the Mexican-American War from 1846 to 1848. I hope you enjoy. Between 1830 and 1920, 4.5 million Irish immigrants arrived in America. By 1840, they comprised half of the U.S. immigrants. They arrived poor, hungry, and sick and then crowded into cramped dwellings in Boston, New York, and other northeastern cities. Centuries of tension between Protestants and Catholics found their way to America. The American Protestant majority resented the Irish for being of lower socioeconomic status and for being Catholic. Also threatened of losing unskilled jobs because the Irish were willing to work for lower wages. The Irish immigrants provided thousands of men as possible recruits for the U.S. Army. Many enlisted in the Army in hopes that the Americans would begin to accept them. During this time, native Irishman Sergeant John Riley, also known as John Patrick O'Reilly, with Company K of the 5th U.S. Infantry, served as a drill sergeant at West Point before deploying to the border. On a Sunday morning, under the pretense of going to Mass, Riley skirted across the border and joined the ranks of the Mexican Army. In 1846, President James K. Polk declared war on Mexico. The war was over the U.S. takeover of the Republic of Texas the previous year and the clash of borders. The U.S. claiming that the border ended at the Nueces River. The Mexicans claim was the Rio Grande. Unfortunately, the Irish soldiers continued to encounter the same discrimination especially for their Catholic faith. The soldiers were forced to attend Protestant services and not mass. This definitely did not sit well with them. The two nations sent troops to their shared border. Some of those troops included immigrants from Ireland, England, Germany, France, Canada, Poland, and Spain. These immigrants hailed from Catholic countries. Many United States soldiers disagree with the war, including one future president, Abraham Lincoln. Mexican Army General saw an opportunity. They sent propaganda and spread messages across the Rio Grande River to U.S. troops that they should leave and join with their Catholic brothers in arms. Proclamations offered Mexican citizenship and land grants starting at 320 acres. Within months of Riley joining the Mexican Army, approximately 175 to 265 or more soldiers deserted and joined him, more than half of which were Irish immigrants, a third German and the rest primarily Catholic immigrants from other nations. The Irish defectors called themselves the St. Patrick's Battalion or Batallón de San Patricio in Spanish to honor the Ireland's patron saint, St. Patrick. The Mexicans called them San Patricios or sometimes Los Colorados as many of them had red hair or a reddish complexion. The battalion's flag was a green background with a winged angle harp, three leaf clovers, and the term Eringo Bra, which means in Gaelic, Irish till the end of time. Riley and the Patricios fought in some of the toughest battles. Eventually, the battalion was forced to make its last stand at the Battle of Churubusco. Approximately 35 members of the battalion killed, 85 captured by the U.S. forces, including Riley himself. 85 other Patricios managed to escape alongside the retreating Mexican forces. Some of the surviving soldiers took part in the Battle of Mexico City. Unfortunately, there was not enough of them to constitute a solid military unit. Because Riley had deserted before the U.S. declared war against Mexico, he was not sentenced to death. Riley testified to deserting because of the discrimination against the mistreatment of Irish Catholics in the U.S. Army, as well as the mistreatment in the U.S. While he escaped the mass hanging of around 50 other captured members of the St. Patrick's Battalion, 
Riley was branded on his cheek with the letter D for deserter. Following his conviction and branding, Riley was released and rejoined the Mexican forces. He continued to serve the Mexican army after the war. Being confirmed permanent major, stationed in Veracruz, he was retired on August 14, 1850 due to an illness of yellow fever. For Mexicans, the San Patricios were heroes who came to their aid in a time of need. On September 18, 1997, the 150th anniversary of the U.S.-Mexican War, a draft decree was submitted for consideration. Its aim was to honor the St. Patrick's Battalion by inscribing in gold letters the following words upon the wall of honor located in the chamber of the deputies of the Mexican Congress. Defensores de la Patria, Defenders of the Fatherland from 1846 to 1848. The decree was proclaimed and appeared in the official Gazette of Mexico on May 26, 1999. Past Mexican presidents have praised the San Patricios. Vicente Fox Quesada stated, the infinities between Ireland and Mexico go way back to the first years of our nation when our country fought to preserve its national sovereignty. Then a brave group of Irish soldiers, in a heroic gesture, decided to fight against the foreign ground invasion. Mexican President Ernesto Cedillo stated, members of the St. Patrick's Battalion were executed for following their consciousness. They were martyred for adhering to the highest ideals. We honor their memory in the name of the people of Mexico. I salute today the people of Ireland and express my eternal gratitude. Tribute is paid to them each year on September 12th, the anniversary of the mass hanging, as well as St. Patrick's Day. The Irish leader John Riley died two and a half weeks after his retirement on October 10th, 1850. And this is the story of John Riley and the St. Patrick's Battalion. Side.